These are air bleeds for your secondaries, and they probably need to be cleaned separately. What we're going to do is we're going to take, because it's still kind of crusty down in there, we're going to get it dry and we're going to put it in the soda blast and clean it a little bit better in there. See it? It's kind of crusty. This thing had sat for a while, so it had this dried fuel in there. See how crusty that is? You want to get all that out because that's just going to stop up the little needles, uh, nozzles for your uh, fuel. Now we're going to pull up the soda blast and clean it, and then we'll dip it back in the ultrasonic to get all the uh, soda out of it. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Nikki Carburetor. Things you need to know working on your carburetor video. So we're here in Charles' shop. The garage over here he's cleaning on this carburetor right now using the soda blaster and uh, we're just gonna kind of talk through he's got this one he's working on tons of other ones here talk through all the parts that go into one of these things Charles tips and tricks for putting them together as well as things to look out for and go so it's gonna be a long video a lot of good information um, about these old carburetors there's not a whole lot of info out there on them so and as with any carburetor they need to be clean and when you think you have it clean make sure it's even cleaner because dirt is not good for carburetors one Nikki, two Nikki's, there's a whole stack of Nikki's over there and then also all this modern like ethanol fuel leaves these deposits in the bottom of your float bowls and the accelerator pump and everything. You gotta make sure you get all that stuff out of there as well. And then here's something else. This is the test run stand. So it's old 12A and uh, put a Nikki on it, run it right here in the in the garage. Make sure it's good. Alright, as you can see this is much cleaner. It's still I think that's just the casting right there. That's much cleaner. Still got some crud down there in the very bottom of those wells. We want to try and get that out. So we're going to get a screwdriver and scrape that out. That will do nothing but stop up the carburetor. Stop up your jets. Looks like glue. Yeah, part of it is soda that I just put in there, but part of it is old, dead fuel that was just sitting down in there. So... This carburetor did, or this part of the carburetor did soak in a in the B12 chem tool overnight, and uh, it may have softened that stuff up. We're gonna uh, we're gonna get it out of there, and we're gonna run this back through the soda or the uh, ultrasonic one more time. Get all this loose stuff out of there. Get this thing finalized, cleaned up. Make sure we got all the soda out of all the little corners and crevices. When this carburetor got shipped to me, it wasn't packaged very well, and the base got broke. The uh, oil metering pump portion of the uh, carb got bent in shipping. When it tried to straighten it, it just broke right off. So this carburetor is getting a different. goes in the ultrasonic and get started on. Nikki carburetor, right, it's offered from, let's say, on RX-7s, 12As, 78 to 84, or 85. So what are the years and differences or things we should look out for when we're buying a used one to try to rebuild the one you have on your car? 79 and 80, if you look at this, this carburetor top right here, this is either 79 or 80. See how large this opening is right here? It's the full width of the carburetor. If you move on up to a 83, 84, see the difference? See how much smaller this is right here? Yep. This is an 83, 84. So, and as well, I know just from my small experiences, you're gonna see 
the 79 to 80 cars are also going to have a lot less emission stuff on the outside of them than the later model cars. Um, in addition to just the tops being different here. Both of these are... So like here's something as well. Like this one has these two ports on it and that one doesn't. Yeah. Even though it's the same shape. Is that... Right? Yep. You know, and, so just and some little of things them will like have that. This, this valve here. Some of them will have a won't have this. So I mean, there's there's probably half a dozen half a dozen <laughs> different styles of carburetor. As far as the base goes, the base is pretty much the same, but there is a difference in this plate. This plate goes underneath your carburetor and this provides all your vacuum ports for the emissions for the air conditioning uh, idle up all those different solenoids that the rat's nest as they call it this one is different and it depends on what manifold you have as to which one this will work on this is a manifold that will work on a tall port engine because it will cover that that bottom uh, section but this one, let me take these straps off. About time to sharpen that knife. Yeah, it's dull. Very dull. <laughs> this one is broken, but I mean, it still works. But they look similar. And this one might actually fit this one. I don't know. Yeah, this one actually fits this one. But there are some that won't fit because of this. I'm sure I've got another one around here. This connects down to your exhaust. Yes. There's going to be a metal tube that goes down and parallels the thermal reactor stuff that you have. This is part of your air pump. This is where your air control valve would be. Mm -hmm. This is part of the air that's pumped back into the exhaust via this air control valve. Mm -hmm. This is your brake booster. And this is another vacuum port. This vacuum port right here gets forgotten sometimes. And people will try and start their car and it won't idle. Make sure that's always plugged off. And this is a brass brush. You can use a brass brush on this aluminum and it won't, it will clean it without damaging it. Don't use a wire wheel or a, anything like that. So it just cleans it up pretty good. Sky, and if you look, yeah, so y'all probably there, ain't gonna be able to see you it. You can't but... see through this one, it's blocked, it's clogged. Yeah, and this one you can see through. There you go, maybe you yep, can see, yeah, you can you see, can see through it. Y'all probably can't see through it on the camera. But one thing that is huge with carburetor stuff is that most of your jets, you know, I guess I can use this air bleed as an example, probably, maybe, maybe not. So y'all can see the little indentation in there. It's going to be hard for this camera to focus on it, but that indentation, there's actually like a jet is basically a, a hole, right? So you should be able to see light through there in some facet. I don't know if y'all can see the light coming through there. So that's a good visual inspection. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze. Um, that's a good visual inspection for your jets after you've cleaned them. And you see Charles here as well. You can use this is just a simple like sewing needle, straight thin, like, like straight thin and or I'm needle. Just, I'm just welding pushing. wire. Yeah, you, you don't want to run anything like a drill bit through there. You'll actually make the holes bigger. Yep. Something like this will. You kind of push the dirt out, and I'm I've got some. It looks like some dried fuel scale or something in there so I'm trying to kind of work it through there to make sure I got it good and clean but this carburetor if we had just put it back together without cleaning this you would only get one squirt yep. coming out of the uh, accelerator pump because that's stopped up you know some people say well it'll clean out no it won't clean out that accelerator pump does not have enough pressure to push anything through there other than fuel it won't, it won't clean out so, and that's another thing too, that just with these Nikki's as well, that I've had experience with, is we've rebuilt one, put it on a car, ran good once, and the second time you started, there was crap in the fuel line or crap in something else, and it got into the carburetor and made it all mad, and had to take it back apart. So it's, as much as carburetors are super simple and, and whatever, um, you really got to take your time when you're putting things like this together to make sure you don't get, you know, like, a hair or some crap or broken fingernail or something in there, you know. So, I don't know if y'all can see that, the little dot. 
the hole. You can see through both of them now. So, and just checking and checking and checking all the little things like that. And then there's two of those in there, isn't it? Just yeah. one? No, there's just one of those in okay, there. Okay, that's the squirter. Yep. On a holly, you, you can like, two. you can change these out. And there's two of them, primary so, and secondary. These are some air bleeds that I left in through the washing process because they're steel. All these are brass. These brass ones I cleaned with vinegar in the ultrasonic. Vinegar is a mild acid, and you just clean, put it in there, run it through the ultrasonic, sealed up so that it doesn't get contaminated. You just don't want to run any steel with there in there with it because it'll turn it black. But it, it cleans them. It doesn't make them look this good. I actually took and polished some of these on the buffing wheel to make them look pretty. I can't get them out now. As you can see, some of them are pretty shiny. But... You just when you if you're going to buff them, be very careful because it'll swing them across the room, and that's not a good thing. But um, these you want to make sure that the hole is clear, and if it's got a hole down at the bottom, which this one doesn't, but this hole here, you need to take and blow air through there to make sure it's clear. Make sure it's coming out the it center sure of the other end. That. These. I hold up to the light and make sure yep. I can see through all the little holes down through there. They're kind of like a perforated pipe. Yep. And do those have a hole at the end? Yes, these have a hole. These these are air. Yep. These these are the, the air bleeds for your main your main and your secondary jets. Mm -hmm. If you didn't have this opening and these holes, it would create a vacuum or a suction and the fuel wouldn't flow through. It has to have this air bleed to allow the fuel to go out of the bowl and down into the uh, uh, plenum. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you've got the holes are clear up through here and that all these holes are stopped up. If you let one sit for a long time and fuel dries in it, these will get calcium or just crud and they'll be stopped up. And you can do the same thing with them. Not with that on there. <laughs> you can uh, run your, your straight pin through there and clean them out. Most of the time, if they're going to be dirty, it's going to be the bottom two or three that are going to be dirty because that's where the fuel settles. Mm -hmm. Same thing with this one. And then, like I said, you want to make sure that this end of it is clear. And you can run, run it through the air and make sure that you know this end is clear. And what I do is I'll take, well, I can't do it that way, between this and this, and there it goes. <laughs> Throwing stuff. So those remind me much like the emulsion tube, how that functions in a Weber. Basically, it's where the air and the fuel are mixing so that it can squirt it out into the, into the car. The thing I like to do when I'm cleaning these brake parts cleaner or car cleaner and you can take and spray it and you can see it's coming out of all those holes that verifies that that's clean all right so the other couple questions i knew that i had yep. um what rebuild kit i guess do you prefer to use and then also what are things that don't come in the rebuild kit so that you need to make sure that you don't lose them damage them when you take it apart okay. things like that there are normally inside the carburetor inside the body let me get another body here okay oh, there's one right here this is one that sat in the uh, cleaner too long and it's it's all crusty and everything <laughs> normally there are two check balls your little bitty ball bearings I don't know if you can see it in my hand right there. That's one of them. There will be one underneath the accelerator pump right down in this hole and one in this hole right here. This is Both of these are part of your accelerator pump circuit. That check ball acts as a stop so that when the, when the pump goes back it doesn't pull fuel out but when it goes forward it pushes fuel past it so if you don't have that check ball in there you 
may not get the pumping action that you're supposed to have. Some kits have those, some kits don't. Some kits have a larger ball, mm -hmm. put a larger ball in there because it'll get stopped. Or it's stuck in there and it'll stop it up. There's also a weight. There's two weights that go in these two holes. One of them is a small weight and one of them is a large weight. Are those made of brass? Yes, they're made okay. of brass. Here's one, and here's one. Now this carburetor had different weights in it. Normally, one of those weights is a little bitty thin, small weight, and then the other one's a little short and fat one. Those go in those two holes. As far as kits go, you got to see me this one. This is a Walker Products kit. I have not opened it. This was in the box with the carburetor, and as you can see, <laughs> See, he got all the, the little balls and the weights. I bought I bought extra balls because lose them, and there's some weights in there. And there's see the red ones. Yep. Those red ones came out of a Hitachi carburetor. So okay. this this kit or this box has multiple parts in it. They don't come with instructions anymore. This is the, the Nikki, and it shows uh, the weight right there underneath the accelerator pump and the check ball right so there. Number 60 and 61, 61. Right? Yep. and then there should be another one uh, here, 54 and 55. Those are the two weights and the two check balls. This is the kit that I have. It's also a walker, and it comes with the uh, new needles. Now, I was talking to another guy that rebuilds carburetors, and he said that these needles and seats are not as good as the factory ones. Mm -hmm. If you can possibly reuse the factory ones, you're best to do that, because these will sometimes leak. Um, so, in there, he's talking about the float valve needle and seat, and that's what moves up and down when your floats move up and down to control the amount of fuel, fuel that comes into the bowls. And when it's what stops it from overflowing. Mm-hmm. Now, this one has, the, I was talking about the, the base plate gasket right there that's solid that will go underneath it to, to make sure you don't have any airflow through those ports. Um, these come with little, uh, a little bitty E-clip, I guess for lack mm -hmm. of, of what you'd call it, that is supposed to go on the... Um, accelerator pump rod which is this rod right here but if you look at the size of this and you look at the size of that clip it's not the right one so be careful when you take it off that you don't lose it because you need a larger one this is the size you need this is mm -hmm. the one that came off of it that part is easy to lose when I take my carburetor apart I take it apart on a old tray and when I turn it upside down the ball, check balls and spring, everything falls out in this tray and doesn't go flying across the here, shop. It's, it's gone. gone. Yep. There's probably parts laying out here. Uh, the rest of these bolts and stuff, this is one of the bolts that where the fuel comes in. It's called a banjo bolt. And it's just got a hole in it. You want to make sure there's no crud in that. And these look like they might have been leaking some fuel because they've got some tarnish spots on them. But other than that, that's all the screws and everything. That's all the little parts. We're going to go take the base out of the ultrasonic here in a minute. All right. I'd say it's cooked. All right. Let's move this over here. Hot stuff. Here's another thing, guys. The board with the studs on it, on the Nickies and Hollies as well, the linkages hang below the base plate of the carb, so you can't actually like set it down on a flat surface and it's sit level. So this, Charles made that so he can build his carburetors on that board. Nice and clean.
very clean, very clean. Other things that you need to look at when you're looking at your kit is to make sure that your gasket covers all the way out to here. There's a gasket. It comes in some of the kits. It looks like this. See, it's got this divot in it right here. It looks like it would work. But if you use this gasket, and it goes like this because this side goes there. It doesn't quite fit that well. As you can see, it doesn't fit well at all. But it doesn't cover this, and you'll get a leak, and this port won't function right. That port has to be covered by all the way out to here to create a vacuum on this port which is part of the emissions stuff. So if you're not using emissions, that would work. And what Eric was saying about the linkage, as you can see, the linkage is, is able to move. So if you were building a carburetor and you were sitting on a flat surface, it wouldn't sit flat because this linkage does hang down below. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna find the right gasket for this because that and here's the right gasket for this. It goes on here, on these two little pegs, and it covers all the way out to here. So now, I'm gonna set this to the side. Because one of the first things we wanna do, we don't wanna bolt this on just yet. It's easier, it's kinda of dirty. It's easier to get our, our jets and all and this is this is a tip that I'm gonna give you that easiest way I found to do this. When you go to put jets in, these jets are supposed to have a washer on them. You take a screwdriver. This one was too large. See how the screwdriver is wide here? You have to take a screwdriver that will go through this hole. So I took a screwdriver, this is one of my favorite ones for working, and I ground that side down so that it fits in there. You want one large enough that it fits the jet properly. And that's not one of the jets, that's one of the jets right there. We gotta make sure these are clean because they look pretty dirty. But as you can see, if you can look up through that hole, you can see daylight through it. That one's good and clean. So there's four jets that go in this thing. There's two big ones and two small ones. And they should have a washer on them. This one has a washer, this one has a washer. We're gonna take those off and put new ones on. And those two don't have washers. That's your four jets. Two different sizes. You got some that have little holes and some that have big holes. So you can see through the light, the right one's the bigger one? Yep, that's your secondary. The small one is your primary. Secondary. This is a secondary. The way I put these secondaries in, I take me a pair of tweezers, hold the jet. Secondary is the larger side, this side here. You take it like this, lay it up like this, and then you can stick it down in that hole, and then you can take and run your screwdriver down there, straighten it up, and turn it in. If you try to do it I mean, it can be done like this. That's the primary. You can do it like this. You don't have to hold it up on the end. Your tweezers will help you to guide it in. And you can take the screwdriver and, and get it started. Well, maybe. There, there it is. goes. And get it started. You don't want to cross thread it or anything. And you don't have to crank these down to, you know, super tight. They just need to be snug. All right, there we go. Now those are in. Those are easier done, like I said, before you put it on. Just so you move it around. But now we can put this part on here. It's got those two little centering pegs. It will lock on there. And the screws that hold that on are these hex head. But 
the washer. And they go right here, here, here. Four plugs. For the body for where the jets went in. And we're going to put some new washer on there. So the Amazon probably package. this office I've seen the Amazon package get put down. Yeah, <laughs> uh, probably because we were standing out here. Had we not been standing here, it would have been slammed. Field goal. Yep. Have you seen the new... Uh, uh, I'm not sure whose commercial it is, but it's the Harlem Globetrotters, and they're helping them move their packages, and they're <laughs> breaking stuff and throwing packages everywhere. It's hilarious. So those plugs look like just jet access plugs, right? Just so you can get in there to get the jets That's out. That's all they're for. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and put some of these in. These have all, we tested these, they've all been cleaned. The larger one is your secondary, it goes here. The smaller one is your primary, it goes there. Again, the large one goes here. The small one goes here. And those just screw in and they don't get torqued spec, just tight, snug. And there isn't a washer or anything on those, is there? Nope, no okay. washers on these. These are just for air. Then you've got you've got several other let me move this over so you can see. You've got these two which are just alike. You've got these two which are just alike. Then you've got a different one. And then you've got four of these, two of which are brass, two of which are steel. These are the ones I talked about. I want to make sure they were clean. Yep, they're good. These two are good. So what I normally do before I take a carburetor apart, I look at it and I make notes of what goes in here, 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 and here. These two right here, one of these is just a plug, which is this. The other one is this long one, and that's the different one. These two won't be in every carburetor. Some of these carburetors have these two. Some of them don't. So y'all can see the plug right here, and then this looks like a idle air bleed, like a mixture screw kind of deal. And doesn't match the rest of these so you should only have one of those that's where that would go I make a little cheat sheet that's what the carburetor looks like and it tells me which one of these goes where this is a little short brass this is a long skinny one this is a short fat one and the silver one if you see this point that's this point right here so these silver ones go right here they're the steel ones and then to orient your Yep, and we're in it like that. Just so y'all can see. And these two go here. And I can't, my fingers are getting cold. I can't turn them. Oh, it's cold. I'm surprised I ain't holding the camera still. And these just screw in there like that. And like that. And those look much like the size of a normal Holly jet. Yeah, they're very similar. I don't know that the thread, thread pitch is the same. Yeah. Now we had, on this, we said we had long skinny and short fat. They're really not short, but they're, they're fat. So the fat ones go closest to the silver, which is here and here. And the long skinny ones go here and go here. And these aren't... These aren't notes from this actual carburetor. These, because you can see this one didn't have these two right here. This is from a previous one, but all your Nickies will have the same setup as far as the air bleeds, the jets, and all that. All this part is the same. Some of them may be different sizes. These are 140s and 70s. These, some of these have numbers on them. You can't see them, but later model carburetors from early model carburetors may be different on these. Now we've got a few more parts over here in our little bitty parts. We've got two weights and two more screws. Well this screw goes with this part right here. This is our accelerator pump. The screw goes down in here. 
we've got to have a gasket right here. So we're going to go back to our gasket box. It's right here. This is the gasket for that. And it's got a little locating pin right there. The other thing that's got to go in there, you remember me talking about it, the little ball bearing, which has now decided it wants to be gone. Oh, there it is. All right. So this ball bearing, or check ball, we want to make sure it's clean. I just kind of wiped it off with my fingers, but it doesn't have any scale or anything on it. That's going to go down in this hole right... The bigger threaded hole, right? This bigger threaded hole right here. It's going to go in there. So we're going to get our tweezers so we don't drop it somewhere else. get our tweezers and drop that hole right down in there. I don't think that's the big weight. I think that's the big weight that it was talking about. That weight goes in there. So the short fat one? The short fat one, yes. So like I said, this, this is a different one from what I'm used to. The, the other carburetor I've taken apart had a real thin weight. Now this, there's no spring that goes in there either, nope, right? there's no okay. spring. And then this goes here. And this will kind of move back and forth once you get it tightened down you, sh you want it to be pretty much centered so I always kind of hold it to the left a little bit because when you're torquing it it's going to go that way all right and it only fit with the squirters going down don't put it with the squirters going up yep all right so now we're going to do something different that's your new accelerator pump this is your accelerator pump housing this is the rod that that actuates it and there's a spring that goes behind it. So now what we're going to do is we are going to put this together. There's four screws that are little small screws. They are the smallest screws on this carburetor. There's four of them. Right here. These four screws. This stuff's still moist from being wet. Brake parts cleaner will dry them off pretty quick. The way this works is the spring will go in there first, but this has to go, there's this, this rod right here, and some of these carb kits will come with two of these. One has a short, let me get one and show you, one has a short, some of them, as you can see, will have a little short pin, and others will have, let me get it come out of there, the longer pin on the back. These Nickies use the longer one. I don't know what this fits. I've got four or five of them in here that have come in kits. You can't use it. It won't work because your accelerator pump uses a linkage. I don't even see it on this one. I'm going to have to take it off of this one. It's right here. If I can get to it. This, it uses, this part right here goes up inside here and pushes that. And... If you use the little short one, it just won't work. So you don't get any accelerator pump squirt. Yep, you don't get any pump squirt. So the easiest way I found to do this, again, my favorite, the tweezers. If you hold this, put that spring in there like that, and then just push that up there like that, and you can start the screws. In the body of the carburetor, it goes body of the carburetor, spring, accelerator pump diaphragm yep. and then the accelerator pump cover. cover right and what the accelerator pumps function is i'm assuming you've watched this far in the video you should know you some should good know carb what? stuff but what that is there for is when you stab the throttle and it gets that big gasp of air this is a mechanical squirt gun that shoots fuel in there to help accommodate for that off to nothing you don't have to worry about Boom. it now this is going to go here and there's this rod that goes through here. And from the factory, they have a little washer that goes in there that keeps it from wiggling back and forth. But if it's not worn too bad, it, it works. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put that little E-clip that I talked about earlier, not the one from the kit, 
is I'll show you the difference here. The one that's in the kit, well, this one doesn't even have one in the kit. Okay, that was a different kit that had one in it. But a lot of times the one that comes in the kit is not big enough to fit this. So you don't want to risk this thing going flying. So what I normally do is I normally try and hold it and push it on. And it, here it snapped. All right, so that's that part of it. Now we're going to take this, put it back down on our base, down in this one. And the weight that's supposed to be in this one, maybe that weight will work. It looks like that's too. Too big, isn't it? Think it's supposed to be in there. Oh yeah. And it just goes down and sits on top of the ball. And then this screws in there. And it, it's not like it needs a lot of weight. I, I've seen them work without that weight, but it has to have the ball. So basically, what the weight's doing when the accelerator pump gets squirted, I guess. It's going to push the ball and the weight up and allow fuel to go past it, right? Yes. And then when the accelerator pump is not working, i.e. no positive pressure, the weight pushes the ball down to oh, seal sure. off oh, that, sure. much like a float needle and seat. So I'm sure if you do lose a ball or lose one of those weights, you could probably make something work if you could find a ball bearing from a regular you know, a sealed bearing or something that's close to the right size and then turn a weight out of brass or make something out of a old screw. Well, or accelerator pump. By putting some fuel in there, and I apologize, I normally have a two-stroke bottle that I have gasoline in. A bowl up. Let's set up, and that's gonna tell us if we're leaking or leaking. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to operate the accelerator pump Gas squirting. Can you see it down there? Yep. It's working. So we know that accelerator pump is working. And there's gas underneath it now. So now we're going to pour that gas off. We don't have anything loose up here, so we can take this off. And up. Well, as I say, is so your ultrasonic cleaner, what you have in there, is not a super aggressive cleaning no, solution, it's right? Like, it's like simple green and water. Yep. And it uses the heat and the ultrasonic just to clean it all off. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to use an acid in there because this is aluminum, cast aluminum, I believe. Yep. Uh, the top is definitely aluminum. So, uh, and I did not take this apart because this was actually fairly clean. I'm going to spray it off with some brake parts cleaner. But uh, these floats, if they've ever been submerged in fuel sometimes will sink because they're kind of a foam but what I've been told is the needles if the needles are factory needles they are normally pretty good and these are moving so we're going to try them and see another reason why I test fire the engine this is your choke pull you have to have this on there to pull the choke. If you put the carburetor together and put this, let it hang down, you have to take this back off to get it out of the way or get it back up here where it needs to be. So what I do is temporarily, until I have it all together and ready to hook up, I put a zip tie on it to hold it up. So I don't have to worry about it flopping down. Now, when I took this apart, this gasket came off intact. So I'm going to reuse it. You just set it down in there like this. There it goes, just like that. One thing you can do as well, we've done this in the past, um, you can take this piece off the car, or off the carburetor, and put fuel to it, and flip it upside down, and make sure that your floats are holding the needles shut, yep. and you can, by hand, you can move the needles up and down, make sure they let stuff spray out. You're gonna make a mess doing that, but, it's one good way to see that if the float needle 
and seat are closed, right? Assuming it's upside down, you can test to see if they're leaking in the closed position. Choke goes like that. That moves a cam down here that when you hit your accelerator pedal in the car and you have the choke on, it opens the throttle blades down in there just ever so slightly so that when you start the car, it's gonna run at 1500 RPMs. Yep. That's what this rod does. That moves this cam. Idle. That's your high idle. You don't hook that up, you won't have a high idle when you first start your car. Mm -hmm. Once it's warmed up and your choke cuts off, then that cam is gone and everything's fine. It goes right here. And here. And that's just a 10 millimeter. This is part of a, some type of emissions pull off. It just goes in here like this. And then this fits right here. That little bitty short screw goes right there. It's the only one that is needed on that. Then this one, this one and this one, I believe are all the same length. This one's a little longer. There should be two that are a little bit longer. Maybe not. The way this choke works, this part here and this part here kind of have to go together like this so this part goes on first your automatic choke has a spring down inside there that's what tells the choke how cold it is that spring changes tension with temperature so as it gets warmer it goes it goes further this way. So right now, that spring is all the way back up in there. So we've got to move it down here and make sure that we catch it on this part right here. Okay, so there's a hook up in here and it's buried back in there, which I think you can grab it. I, my hand was in the shadow. See that little hook? He's pulling it back. Yeah. A hook in there. So that hook needs to hook on to this. Just like that. Just like this little rod right here on the choke. Okay, and you can, I don't know if y'all can see it, but, um, right, there you go. Now you can see it, get me out of the shadow. So I'm going to hold still right here for a second, and I'll put some text on the spring and on the hook where it needs to hook up. Remember the zip tie? See where yep. this is now? If we didn't have that zip tie, it would be below this. We'd yep. have to take this back off to get it in there, so... What we're gonna do now is, you gotta hold this in place so that spring doesn't come loose. And we're gonna bring this part up and twist it around so that it fits on top of this right here. And then we need that long screw for here because we got two pieces of metal and then just a normal screw here. If you're doing an emissions delete, you can do away with this that's part of the emissions, part of the choke parts. You can do away with this hose, which this hose goes here. And then there's another hose that goes here. Here, over here, and it goes on this one. They go in that little clip, and you can kind of squeeze that little clip to hold it. This is your vacuum secondary diaphragm inside of here. You can test it to make sure it's good. Put your thumb over that and move it, and it should. If it holds vacuum, it will stay. If it if it if it doesn't if it doesn't stay when you close it. That means that diaphragm in there is bad. This doesn't come in the kit. Mm -hmm. So, Can you get a replacement secondary diaphragm or you don't know? And I normally put this on before I get it this far put back together. And it had a gasket on it that was in pretty good shape. So I'm not replacing it. Now, what we got to do now is turn that over and hook that up. So we're going to turn the whole carburetor over. Just set it down on the table. And this linkage here has to hook up here. 
And that's where we need another Carter key. And I think we're kit all out in our kit. But... Whoa! Hooks on this right here. And I can't get it to go that way. So we're going to hook it on there first. And then we're going to hook it on here. And that is one of the... Uh, that is for the what they call the hot start. You know that little solenoid that pulls on the strut tower on the driver's side? Yep. When you turn the key on when it's hot, you hear a... And that's this. It's kind of a... It almost gives it an accelerator pump pump when you mm -hmm. first turn the key on. Some people don't think it's a cold start, but it's actually a hot start. Cold start is your choke. What's got to happen is this got to go through there. And this washer goes on there, and that goes on there like that. You don't want to tighten any of this up yet. From the factory, and this is a tip, this would have had a screen down in here that goes around this. It's kind of like a little miniature filter that keeps trash from getting inside the carburetor. This one had already had them taken out, so there's nothing in here. But it would look like a little bitty... Uh, brass screen about three inch to a half inch tall with just a little mesh around it that's going to go in there and start you want to be sure and start these bolts before you tighten anything up now these will have fuel pressure on them so you want to get them pretty tight but you don't want to strip that out because that is aluminum underneath there so just good and snug and you can always torque them down a little bit more if after you get it together and it's leaking fuel. We're going to tighten this again. Good and snug. All right, now we got to find that piece that goes out here. Right here. Aluminum washer behind it. This is your return line. Goes on like that. Then you need another seal washer this looks like a pretty specialty piece here that goes on the end and then there'll be a bolt that holds that down the middle feed line's a big one return line's a small one so you can see feeds in goes to both those float valves here and here which are up under that both float bowls and then any excess pressure psh, goes back to the back of the tank back of the car into the tank so if those of you didn't see. We did a uh, couple years ago. We actually painted this. How long has it been since we painted the blue truck? Heck, that's two years now, two ain't years it? Now. Two years it's two been years. painted. This, this time two years ago, you took it away from here. Yeah. Man, that's been, that's been that long already? Yep. And I'll take this part back off after we test this carburetor on, on the engine because he didn't send me one. So. Like I was saying, so I can go, that looks like a pretty specific bolt, so don't lose it. Yep, it is. You're gonna want that one. All right. <laughs> so that's not all, but that's most. This part here, bolts on here, and has a vacuum line for down here. Actually, it's, I wanna say it's here. Yeah, I think that's right. here. There you go. All right, so when you get ready to put it on the car, before you do that, you want to do it what we just did there. Test and make sure that your linkage is good. That's going to tell you, hey, it's ready to go on the car. Because this thing is kind of a pain to put on the car. This bolt right here to hold it on is very difficult to get to without proper tools. Uh, this is one that Eric made to fit that bolt so that you can get on there and turn it. Uh, I had bent some wrenches one time to, to get in there. Some of these are kind of hard to get to. But when you put it on, put your fuel lines on. Test to make sure it's not leaking here or here. Test to make sure that these bowls don't, you know, overfill and then you have fuel dumping in here. If those floats stick, you'll have fuel dumping in here. So it'll actually come out of these Venturis. Yep, it'll just overflow and here, just flood there. in there. If you plug this... This is a vent. If you plug that, you'll have flooding problems. Mm -hmm. So never plug that one. That one is supposed to go to part of the rat's nest 
and is just a vent. This is your float bowl vent. Yes. So on a holly carb, you have those two things that stick up under the air cleaner. Yep. Those are your the float vents. bowl vents on that. On a Weber, there's actually a little foam thing that's behind the air filter. Yep. And effectively, if you don't have a vent in the float bowl, it's going to pressurize, and then it's going to shoot fuel out of it. So don't cap that one. We've learned that the hard way a couple of times. A couple of times. Uh, other than that, um, there's another part that goes here. There's another part that goes here. Um, and you'll have to, uh, if you're watching this video, situationally for your year of car, may or may not have as much of the emission stuff as well. So this one looks like it's for a later, mo later model car. So... You get this little pot here that connects to the rat's nest there. Yep. This is like the, uh, so your car doesn't come down to idle too fast, right? So this is the slow return. Yep. So it's like a little shock absorber for your throttle pedal, it effectively. Goes right here. It goes up under here yep. that way, I yep. think, and Just rides on, on this tab. You know, so stuff like that, although we don't show it in this video, just be sure to take pictures when you take your carb apart, so that way you know where things go, you know. Um, like I said, this is a super long video, but well, we got Charles here for the day and he's got a carburetor to build, we kind of wanted to show it because I don't work on these carburetors pretty much at all. At least I don't aspire to. You'll have some extra parts. I did not take, uh, let me go back over this. I didn't take these glasses off because this one has already been sealed, but that would have required a new O-ring behind it and a new washer. And that's what goes behind this. It's not something that, you know, if, if it's not leaking before, unless you just want to take it off and clean it, put that on. I was talking about how some of the different carbs have different things. There's a different valve that can go here and it has this type of seal. Um, here's that, that gasket that went behind this. Um, this is another type of seal that goes on here, if this was a different one, it, it would use two screws out here that hold this on. Um, these kits are made for 79 to 83 or 85, so they've got some extra parts in them. Um, there's two different ones of these normally in a kit. Some of them will have a little hole right here because there will be two bleeds that come up to here let me see if i can find one of those real quick so there's a different gasket that fits this one that has these two little bleeds on it right here so um that one had a gasket here i mean uh that one had the two little screws on the body mm -hmm. this one's got it on this part so there's just different like you were saying earlier there's different ones of these that have different ports uh this is one that had the triangle as you can see, the triangle fitting that went here. I'll end up blocking that off on this one. This one is a screw in. This one is a screw in. So there's just different ones for different years. And these kits, kind of generic. They didn't want to make one for 79, 80, another one for 81 to 82, and another one for 83, 84, 85. So they make one kit that fits all of them. And like I said, sometimes the gaskets will have a different, there'll, there'll be two different gaskets and just use the right one. These are both look like to me the same gasket. Mm -hmm. So when I send it back, he wants those back. So. so, and that's pretty much, I mean, I've rebuilt carburetors before, like my Jeep, it's a Weber 3236. Um, like a, a four barrel Rochester carburetor that would go on like uh, my mom's 283 her V8 you know so the thing you know just my recommendation and, and he'll agree is take your time go slow clean. you know clean everything even the outside of the carburetor the inside clean everything and as well you know Charles has an ultrasonic cleaner that he doesn't have to use super abrasive chemicals in um, but if you need to use, like, I mean, I've soaked a carburetor in that chem dip stuff, you know, but that chem dip stuff is hard on seals. It's hard on brass. It's hard on stuff. So you got to make sure if you're going to do that, 
you know, 10 minutes, take it out, clean it out, make sure you're not tearing anything up, make sure it's not etching. Um, and in addition, you know, something like this, if you're fighting those screws earlier, you know, when you take stuff apart, make a list, make a cardboard cutout, lay everything out exactly how it needs to go, you know, so you don't forget, right? There's only so much in one of these videos, you know, that we can show you and do if you don't do the work on the front end, you know, when you're taking it apart, right? So hopefully, you know, I definitely learned some stuff today about the Nikki. I want to thank Charles for letting us bother him for the day and share some of his knowledge with you guys. And uh, definitely, for sure, comment below any questions you have on this stuff. Um, which I know Charles won't read the comments, but I'll hop on there and check them. And we can always make another video with another carburetor in the future and address those questions. So comment below. Let us know what you need to know. Let us know issues you've had with your Nikki stuff before and with rebuilding them. And then also, if you know where you can buy parts and stuff like that, just drop that link and stuff in the comments as well, and I can pin them. So I think that's all we got. If you think that's all we got. I think so. So thank you guys very much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Keep it red. Oh, we don't have Letty. We got to go find your dogs. Did you put them inside? Yeah, oh, they're over here. Doodle, doodle's crazy, but Rubel's cool, and that's Eleanor. They're not, they're not as camera friendly as Letty is. <laughs> Peace, guys.